Welcome to section 3 of this course, which is dedicated to linked lists, stacks and queues. First we'll be discussing what is a linked list data structure, what it's good for and what it's bad for. And also we're going to implement the linked list in C Sharp. Then we're going to review a common problems that people meet when using linked lists and we'll study common algorithms to address those problems. Last but not least, we're going to review stack and queue data structures and also we'll be implementing them in C Sharp by using internally a linked list data structure. Let's get into details of implementation of a linked list data structure. What is a linked list? It's a linear collection which consists of multiple elements where each element has a value and a pointer to the next element. If we want to access an element, it's a slow operation. It has a linear complexity or n. But if we know that we want to delete or to insert at, then this operation is very fast. It's a constant complexity, O1. It doesn't require to allocate a continuous memory, and this is a good thing. When you do lots of changes, very convenient to use a linked list. However, the access to random element is slow, and this is the main disadvantage of this data structure. In real world, it's been widely used. For example, in C Sharp, we use a linked list to maintain a list of subscribers to events. And also, there are other data structures that can be implemented with linked lists, like uh, queues and stacks. They can be also implemented with an array, but uh, as I already said, it has an advantage and disadvantages. And in this case, dynamically changing data structures are good to be implemented on a linked list if the access time is not very important. In case of stacks and queues, we can implement those data structures like we have a fast access to the important parts of those data structures and also to have a fast insertion and deletion. Also, the lists are used in functional programming and recursive patterns. And if you saw, for example, F sharp or maybe more complicated languages like Haskell, then you probably used uh, linked lists already. So linked lists look like this. Yeah, we have a list of nodes. Each node knows about the next node. There can be a double linked list when each node knows about the next and the previous nodes. Also, there are specific kinds of uh, linked lists like circular lists, but we won't consider those data structures in this section. We will concentrate on a single linked list. Okay, so let's try to search an element in a linked list, how it looks like. We know that we have the first node, and then we have to go through all nodes in the collection and see if we have a specific value inside the current node. For example, let's try to find the value 14 in the linked list below. So we start with the first element. It contains a value of 30, which is not what we want. Then we have a 7, 27, and finally 14. So the average complexity of this operation will be ON, which is, as I already mentioned, slow. Now, let's try to delete a node from a linked list. To delete a node, we need to know the previous node. So we have to find it and then the operation will be a slow operation because we need to search for a node first. But if we already know this node, then it's very fast. It's like we take the pointer to the node of 27 and we just 
say that it now points to the element with the value of 14, like this. So we have deleted an element from the linked list. Now, how do we insert a new node? We also need to know a node where we insert a new element at. So, in case it would be element with a value 7, we just create a new node and then change the pointers accordingly, like this. A double linked list knows about the previous nodes and so there can be an addition before a node. But as I already said, uh, in a single linked list, you can do only insert at or insert after a specific node. If you already know the node, this is a fast operation. However, if you need to find specific position first, then it will be a ON operation. Now let's see how we can implement a data structure like this in C Sharp. So this is a source code for linked list class, and the base of everything is a class node. You may notice that it's a generic class, we have the angle brackets and the T inside. This means that it can be used with any type in C Sharp. So a class node has a pointer to the next node, which is called next, and also has a value of the specific type. Now by using this node inside the linked list class, we implement uh, its logic. First of all, we have the root node or first node inside the linked list, and then we implement such operation as find, which I call the find first element, and also you can find last element or find all occurrences of element in the list. And we have add after, which requires uh, us to provide a node after which we want to add a new element. Or I have implemented add operation, which adds a value after the last node in the linked list. We also have a delete after operation and we override the toString method to create a visual representation of a linked list in our console. I will show how it look like. Let's start with a find first operation and what we return from this method is a pair of values, uh, a previous node and the found node. Why do we do this? Because we need the previous node for operations like delete and insert add. We, of course, could define a class for that, but C Sharp has a built in entity for achieving such uh, goals, and it's called a tuple. And we can return multiple values from method. In our case, it's two values, and I will show how you do that. So here, we start search from our root node, and we define a previous node, which initially is null. And then first we check corner cases, like if root is null, then there are no values at all. And also, if we have a value at root element, when we immediately return a pair of values, which is null because there is no previous node to the root and the root node itself. Then we do a traversal through the linked list. We go and say that they move our pointers to the right. So the previous node becomes a current node and the current node becomes the current.next node, and we check for each iteration if uh, the current value is uh, what we are looking for, and in this case we return a pair of nodes, which is the previous node and the current node. And we do that until the end of the linked list, while null is uh, not equals to current.next element. We do that until we traverse all the list, and if we still have not find any value, when we return a pair of null values, so if we got a null pair, 
This means that we didn't find an element with the value we're looking for. Now let's see how we implement add after operation. It's implemented very easy. First, we have to create a value node from a value. We create a new node which has a value that is provided with the method call. And we also set our next pointer to the node that is next for our previous node that we provided in this method. And then we just say that, okay, here is our previous node. The next node will be our new node, value node. And its next node will be the node that was initially after our previous node. Let's quickly review a delete after operation. So what it does is we provide the previous node and we delete the next node after this one. To achieve this, we first pick the node which is next to this. So we say that next node equals node.next. And if it doesn't exist, then we have nothing to delete and we return false, meaning that the deletion operation wasn't successful. But if it does exist, when we provide its next node to the previous next node. So it's like we skip over the node that we are deleting and we say, okay, we have deleted the node after the provided node successfully. And the last but not the least is addition operation. It's when we adding a new value to the end of the current uh, linked list. What we do, we, as usual, create a new value node, which means that we have a value we provided, and also the next element is null because it's uh, the very last node. And then we start our traversal, like we check corner cases when, if we have a null root node, then this node becomes the root. But if not, we say, okay, starting from root, while the next node is not now, we advance our node and until we find the last one. And when we just set its next pointer to the node we just created. I know it looks complicated, but uh, if you just sit and probably step over the code in debugger. This is what our operation in linked list look like. And now let's go and uh, write some tests for our linked list. So here in this test, we create a new linked list of uh, int numbers and then start to fill it. Like we adding element one, five, 12 and 15. And then we print out what this list uh, look like. Then we say go and find us the first occurrence of an element with a value of 5. And we have a pair of nodes, which previous node and a node uh, with the value. And now we check if, if what we found is uh, 5 and we check what is the next to this node. Then we delete this element with the value of 5. See how our list have changed. Now adding the 10 value instead of 5 and finally print out the values in the list again. So let's run the code and see what will happen. After some time we will see the results so initially the list consists of four elements and we have found the node with value 5 and the node next to it is uh, 12. And when we have deleted the 5, uh, the list became like this. So this is right. And then we added the 10 instead of 5. And this is also look uh, what uh, we needed. So it seems 
like we have implemented our linked list properly. Good job!